I'm Rick Richards. I'm a business analyst here um, with Parsons TKO. Uh, and that means that I look at all kinds of things. Uh, I look at um, what organizations want to do with their data, um, what data they already have collected, if those things align to their strategic vision. Um, but I also dive into the data a bit more deeply than that and look at what's the quality of that data. Um, is it answering the right uh, questions? Is it being used to answer questions that it ought to be used to? Um, so this is the uh, the kind of genesis of of where this this comes from. The uh, basically how to get ready for GA four, and also you know on the back end, should I even use Google Analytics for? Is that a, a thing I should be uh, moving to in the first place? Uh, we're going to assume if you came here today that you're actually really interested in getting uh, getting started with GA4 um, and we'll want to uh, to take a look at um, getting you up to speed. Um, and this is our agenda here. It's uh, less about what we're going to cover and more of uh, more of a why, a um, couple of mantras here. Uh, we want to discuss the history of Google Analytics, not to bore you, but we want you to be up to date and understand um, what's going on and, and why it's happening. We want to review technical changes um, to the platform and big shift predictions um, so that you're in the know and you're prepared for um, to, to go into your organization and, uh, and to your teams and to speak uh, confidently about those things. And uh, we also want to plan next steps, help you plan next steps for you and your teams, uh, obviously, so you're prepared. Um, and you can uh, follow up that confidence uh, with uh, real know-how. So um, we'll start with uh, a quick synopsis, um, how, how we got here, um, the evolution of Google Analytics. Um, now, Google Analytics has been around for quite a while, uh, but Universal Analytics, uh, which is uh, kind of what everyone's been using, um, It'll be uh, it'll actually be slightly more than ten years um, when it is sunsetted next summer, July first, um, uh, and it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. We'll talk about that a little bit, but you know, um, the uh, for the past ten years, let's say, um, this has been the standard for web metrics, and. Um, not only is it the standard for kind of how conversations work, it's uh, universal analytics has been totally free, totally free to customize, totally free to get the data back out, whatever you capture in there. Um, so it's a huge uh, piece of many businesses and many orgs, and especially since it's free, many um, nonprofit organizations uh, use this because it's right there. You just flip a couple switches and you're getting data. Um, you do a couple customizations, that's free. You're get, collecting more free data. You pull that out into Google Data Studio. Uh, again, another free tool where you can create amazing dashboards um, using, using all of that data. Um, and while it may sound like, oh, okay, we're just getting a new version of Google Analytics, uh, it is not at all that simple, <laughs> uh, which we'll be talking about today. So GA4 is going to replace Google Universal Analytics um, next summer. It will be gone for good. Um, we're actually kind of in the sunsetting phase now uh, where you can be using both platforms, uh, which is a recommended approach, both from us and from Google themselves. Um, so, you know, whether you're just using something basic and you're just saying, oh, I'll just jump to GA4 when Google tells me I have to, um, or you've really pushed the limits of Universal Analytics, you've set up all kinds of customizations, uh, custom metrics, custom reporting, et cetera. Um, doesn't matter, um, unless you are paying for a 360 account, uh, it ends July 1st, 2023. And, um, if you are paying for a 360 account, I think you get a couple extra months, uh, and that's it. Um, and there's some, uh, there's some really good reasons for that. And we'll, we'll mention it as we go. Um, but suffice it to say, uh, if you want to avoid data loss and you want to, uh, avoid reporting discrepancies that are going to mean um, tough conversations uh, with <laughs> your teams and your boards and uh, your constituents. Um, if metrics suddenly change, uh, if you don't do anything now, you wait to June 30th, 2023, uh, and then the next day you flip over all your reports and suddenly all of your metrics look different um, and you can't explain that, 
uh, you're going to have uh, some upset upset folks on your hands. But if you start talking about it now, you start teaching within the organization um, and, you know, your board and your constituents out, uh, you know, from within the organization, you start talking about how these metrics change. You start talking about how the data uh, looks a bit different, um, but might be a bit more accurate or might represent different things. Um, you will hopefully be in a good place. So, uh, and again, uh, just a note that if when I say universal analytics, this is what people have just called Google Analytics up until this point. Uh, it's always been called universal analytics, but nobody called it that. Everyone just said Google Analytics. And so now Google Analytics 4 sounds like a new version, new features, et cetera. Um, and it is much, much, much more than that because as you may have noticed, the internet has changed and many things have changed since 2012. Um, the uh, GA, Google Analytics, Universal Analytics was initially built, uh, this is way back. Uh, it was a tool to measure UTM tracking and basically you could see how well your ads did um, how well they performed because Google wanted you to pay them more money to run ads. Uh, so easy peasy. Uh, and then more and more people started using it uh, and it became this uh, more holistic tool, but it was still based around how people use the internet a decade or more ago, right? Um, it's a website-based tracking tool. And then eventually people started using mobile devices more. And so they kind of retrofitted mobile tracking in there, but it was like separate and not really the same thing. And yeah, uh, it was not clean. We just kind of kept bolting on pieces uh, to a, a much older ship. Uh, and then, you know, because of all that, it was GDPR and other privacy laws non-compliant due to those not existing when it was built. Um, so uh, GA4 now, um, which really started uh, kind of released to start being used in 2020, but it's still ongoing changes, very much in flux. Uh, that has been designed from the ground up around modern web behavior, uh, particularly in the past five years, since that's kind of when it's been developed. Um, apps are no longer an afterthought. In fact, they inform how metrics are collected. Um, and we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that on the next slide, but, uh, you know, Think about the way people used to use computers, uh, just go home, sit down at their desktop, pull up some pages, um, go look at one site, look at a couple of different things. That, that was what Universal Analytics is measuring. GA4, really concerned with people from all different devices, might be looking for five seconds, might be just clicking a button and downloading something. All kinds of new ways to, uh, to measure engagement. Uh, and, Google tried to address a number of the, these emerging privacy concerns. If you're following the news, uh, you may know that they're still not quite hitting the mark from um, Europe's perspective. Um, and that's that's still ongoing, but suffice it to say, uh, way better than Universal Analytics, which was just, you know, roll, roll your own um, privacy uh, GDPR compliance. Um, and now GA4 is not really centered around ads. Google, that's still, you know, major um, profit point for Google, but it is not um, the main thing. It's not their, their main driver. Uh, and so there's so much more um, that's available in this tool. However, that means that, you know, <laughs> they want to, uh, the, you're going to start seeing uh, them asking for money for, for things, I think. Uh, that is a, that's a prediction. Um, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes as we talk about, uh, you know, trends to watch out for. So, um, as we said, the new internet has changed and so should your analytics. Um, and this is kind of what we just talked about a little bit, but uh, with universal analytics and what you might be used to, metrics are heavily based on the page itself. How many page views did this get? Um, how many sessions uh, viewed this page? How much time did people spend on this page? Um, it also relies heavily on customizations because it, it just did that out of the box. And so if you wanted to look at how far down did someone scroll, how many things did someone download? What links did they click? Um, did they buy something? These are all customizations that are, um, are mostly unavailable in universal analytics. E-commerce was, was added, uh, so that's helpful, but um, everything else kind of had to be done by hand um, and put in there. Um, but the nice thing is that 
you could put whatever data you wanted to in there as long as it wasn't personally identifiable information, i.e. someone's name or email address, because um, that would get you banned from Google. But uh, everything else, you could put in whatever you wanted and pull out whatever you wanted. But as we move into GA4, um, we see that metrics are heavily based on engagement a user has on your site. When you look at the default report, it doesn't tell you the bounce rate and the um, the page views. It tells you how many engaged users out of your total users that you have and how long were they engaged for. Um, and what that looks like here uh, with our kind of rough rough graphic there at the bottom, um, as you can see, someone's someone just got their phone open. Uh, maybe they hit a, a play a video on your site. Maybe they hit the download button. Maybe they just like scroll through one article real fast. Um, that's that's what GA4 is building this picture around, um, and it's starting to track conversion events. It's starting to be really concerned. Like anything can be a conversion event, uh, and and from there, it also has a lot of um, AI tools built in where it's starting to try to figure out. Uh, its own recommendations that it would have uh, for your site. Whether or not you want those is, you know, um, up for debate. Uh, but that is, uh, it's really designed to be a tool to kind of watch over all of your different properties, all of your different um, iterations, you know, it's meant for apps, as well as mobile sites, as well as desktop sites, uh, etc. Um, and it's trying to kind of do everything for you and figure out everything for you and kind of really pull you into Google's ecosystem there. Um, and because of that, um, you can still customize a lot of the data you're capturing, but it's a lot harder to get back out. Um, or I should say, it's harder to get back out without going through Google um, and using BigQuery and opening yourself up to um, potentially um, expensive, uh, expensive options uh, in terms of querying and data storage. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, a minute ago, bounce rate and time on page. And I, I also said when it, when we started here um, that we have, or you may already be using these. These are these are kind of primary pieces um, that people like to uh, report on, uh, and they're going away. They're vanishing. <laughs> um, we talk about average session duration, i.e., how long somebody's visit lasted um, to our website. Um, we talk about, uh, this is in universal analytics on the left side of my screen. We talk about average time on page. How long did someone spend on this page? Uh, we talk about bounce rate. Um, and that's a, one of the most, these, these are actually some of the most misunderstood metrics, particularly time on page and bounce rate. Um, because again, universal analytics is expecting like early 2000s uh, level of usage, right? You come to a site, you look up a thing, you look at multiple pages, that's what we care about. The people who come and look at one page and are, get what they need in 30 seconds and leave, we don't care about those. We're gonna call those bounce, bounce, <laughs> bounce people. Uh, but as you can see, as we look in GA4 over here, the average engagement time, uh, these are reports um, pulled from the same time period uh, from, both a universal analytics and a GA4 property. And you can see that average time on page uh, was four minutes and 19 seconds. GA4 recorded the average engagement time of 33 seconds. Uh, so again, if you're reporting on time on page now, and then suddenly July 1st, you start reporting on average engagement time, um, people who read your reports, uh, particularly you know, board, C-suite, um, anyone like that is gonna go, what happened? What what is going on? <laughs> uh, and the reality is that um, it's just a different way of measuring uh, these things. So average time on page only captures data when uh, someone looks at a second page on your site. If they only look at one page, nothing is captured. Uh, bounce rate is looking at people who only looked at one page and then left. Even if they spend 20 minutes on that one page reading it, uh, by default, that's a bounce. Um, but we know now in 2022 um, that, and, and GA4 is built around this, right? Uh, getting someone to spend 33 seconds, if they're on their phone, imagine this, uh, they get an email, they click a link to your site, um, they sign up for an event, uh, they hit a button, they click a download, um, they, they scroll real quickly through a news update, right? If you get 33 seconds of their engage time, and so Google is actually you know, doing the uh, slightly creepy thing of like watching now, 
was your web page in view? Was it obscured by other windows? Um, was it actively on screen on the phone or on the on the computer? Um, that's what that engagement time is measuring. Before it's just we start a counter when they come to your site, uh, and then we turn that counter off when they leave, um, and that's that's the the numbers you're getting. So ostensibly, GA4 is measuring um, a more accurate engagement number, uh, and that may be really useful for uh, for looking at at your metrics. And in fact, um, there's a scroll depth option, uh, which again used to be a customization. Um, and it's now available out of the box uh, with with GA4. So um, you can tell how far down the down a page someone scrolled, right? Uh, if you're a content producer, if you're writing long form content, that's incredibly valuable because you might care less about people who spent 20 minutes and just sat at the top of the page, and you might care a lot more about people who spent 10 minutes and made it to 50% of the page. Um, you know that they're probably more engaged than the people who just didn't really do anything and just had it up on the screen, right? So you may be thinking to yourself, is GA4 right for my organization? Um, and then you may also be thinking, well, do I even have a choice? And realistically, yes, you have a choice in whether you stay with Google Analytics or you go to another platform. Um, but just to talk about some of these, these big differences, these big shifts that you may see um, organizationally here. Uh, Universal Analytics is organized around properties and views. Um, so this allowed teams, still allows, because it's still running for a year, allows teams, departments, stakeholders, even just a single individual to kind of focus the data down to only what they want to see. Um, and there's enough variation here that I'll, I'll jump from universal to GA4, right? So now GA4, property and view are one and the same. Filtering, as you used to do with the views in, in universal analytics, that's going to permanently alter your data for everybody. It's gone. It's no longer collected because you filtered it out. Um, before you could filter these things and you just, you didn't see them because they weren't important to you. Uh, that's not, a, that that's not available as simple views in, in GA4. So it's going to take a lot more know-how and a lot more training um, to build this out. Uh, so if you have people who are trained to use uh, the custom reporting options in GA4, uh, they can absolutely get, get those uh, view level pieces where they look at just what's relevant to them uh, in the form that they, that they want to see it. Um, but uh, this other big difference here, Google Analytics right now, Universal Analytics, you log in, there's almost infinite default reports. Uh, there's there's too much for a lifetime, really, um, of so many different things that you can click on and learn about your data. Um, uh, they have built this up, obviously, over 10 years, and so there's, there's a lot there. Um, the custom options are kind of limited, though. And for that, you might want to export to another tool, especially Google Data Studio, a very popular one because it's free and it integrates really well with uh, Universal Analytics. Uh, and that export is free. And the data, what you capture in Google Analytics, you get out of Google Analytics when it's we're talking about Universal Analytics. In GA4, we have a lot of changes here. Uh, there's very minimal default reports. Everything is customized. Um, and there's it's a, ro it's a robust tool um, to use uh, within GA4. Uh, to, to build out those custom reports. You can get a lot of stuff, um, but you have to know how to use them. And it's, uh, I, I don't need to tell you, obviously, it's brand new. People are still figuring this out. There is not a lot of built up knowledge. Um, so just dropping this into your organization is gonna be massive because people will click in and look for some default reports, look for things they used to just get by clicking a button or two, and they're gone. They're gonna have to build them. Um, or they're going to need someone in your organization who's building them, building the reports for them. Uh, and, you know, a key point here, data is more locked in and shorter lived, right? So uh, as part of this, uh, the privacy concerns, GDPR, et cetera, um, there's a, an expiration of a lot of data that gets collected. Um, you could, that was technically still a thing in universal analytics, uh, but a lot of people would disable it uh, because Google said, sure, yeah, we'll just keep your data forever. No big deal. 
Uh, now there's lawsuits about that. So um, not only can the data expire and you can do nothing about it uh, other than export it to BigQuery, the data is, is more locked in. Uh, and so I talked about Google Data Studio, a free kind of dashboarding report. Um, it gives you access only to, I believe, well, less than half of the dimensions um, that are captured natively in GA4. Um, so where with Universal Analytics, you capture all kinds of data, you go to GDS, it's all there for you. Right now, you set up GA4 the way you want it, you capture all kinds of data, you go to GDS, Data Studio, and, and, and it's just not there. Uh, and in fact, things are disappearing by the day because we built something for a client uh, to about three weeks ago. Um, and then one day it just stopped working and we looked in and it was because the dimension we were pulling in no longer available from GA4. So very much still in flux, um, very much still a, uh, a learning curve. Uh, it's gonna be a big learning curve for everybody. Um, and I mentioned BigQuery a number of times now. This is another Google product. Um, there are some free tiers. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it's almost requi a required additional product. Um, if you're not only gonna live in GA4 um, and kind of build out uh, reports that way, if you want dashboards, um, you're gonna need BigQuery. Uh, and even some of the, uh, the services, the third-party services that used to pull data from Google Analytics, uh, Supermetrics, for example, seem to be pulling like aggregated data and not kind of the full data set the way um, you might expect if you're used to using Data Studio now. So that was a lot. Um, uh, that was uh, what we might call a fire hose of information. Uh, so I wanna take a, a quick break here um, and uh, we're gonna, I think, put out a survey um, cause I'm really curious, uh, how people are, are using what, what people are using right now. Uh, you might still be relying on GA3 universal analytics entirely. Um, you might be using them both, uh, and, you know, get, getting GA4 set up. This has been the recommendation, uh, from Google for about a year now, start pulling in the data, even if you're not using it actively, because it's there when you want to do some year over year reporting. Um, some of you might be using GA4 as your main source of analytics now, which is great. Um, I hope. Uh, it, uh, it's certainly great that you're uh, kind of ahead of the curve there. Um, some of you may have migrated to another platform entirely and said, okay, we're done. We're done with the Google ecosystem thing. Let's let's move on. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, some of you uh, are, are here because you're just curious about analytics and you want to learn uh, what kind of possibilities are out there. Um, and I've got information for all of you. Don't worry. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, well, I would see the poll numbers coming in. It looks like the vast majority of folks are still relying on universal analytics um, and didn't click the, but GA4 is set up. Um, I, you know, huge call out for you all, uh, please. Uh, and you'll see this in our, in our next step slides um, coming up here in, in a little bit, but um, get GA4 set up as soon as possible, even if it's not the platform you wind up going with, even if you wind up migrating off of it, um, it is free to just turn on and start collecting data. And that way you have it um, and you can look back and when you, um, you know, again, that, that, that whole deadline thing, what you don't want is to get to June of next year, you're just turning on GA4 um, and people say, well, let's look at the past three months of data. Let's see the differences in universal analytics versus GA4 um, and how, how those metrics shifted. And you, you're just starting from scratch. Uh, do not want that at all. It's, uh, can't get a full year of data at this point because we're already in September. Um, but if you turn it on now, you can at least get most of a year's worth of data um, and start pulling that in. Uh, and let's see, I guess... Uh, we could, oh, good. It's, uh, that, thank you for sharing the poll. Um, so yeah, you all can see that 64% still relying on universal analytics, um, mainly using GA3, but GA4 is set up is actually 25% of folks. Uh, so that is good to hear. Uh, and we actually have, it looks like just one person uh, who's using GA4 as the main source of analytics, um, which again, great. Uh, good job being ahead of the curve there. 
and uh, hope you're getting what you need out of it. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, and then, yeah, just a couple of folks who are are not using any uh, any analytics. Let's see. So um, this is good. Um, and I think this is a, a good place to to move into what's in store and how can you prepare. So here are some uh, some big shifts that we want to watch for, um, because we we already see them uh, kind of coming down coming down the line. Uh, algorithms versus DIY analysis. Uh, GA four is really uh, universal analytics. Actually, had a number of kind of algorithmic um, analyses uh, that were that were put in place. Um, and they were neat. Um, I think some people kind of use them and, you know, uh, they just provided some, some quick insights. Uh, but the algorithmic approach has been greatly expanded in GA4. And it's really trying to be a tool that's saying, don't, don't bother looking at your data. We're going to tell you what you should pay attention to in your data. Um, and certainly if you don't have a lot of uh, staff capabilities, um, staff uh, resources there, um, that can be helpful to have, you know, some, some data is better than none, but also, uh, the wrong data can be very dangerous. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, just in terms of data strategy. And, um, yeah, and then, uh, the DIY analysis part, as I, as I mentioned before, you're going to. Uh, somewhat, the GA4 is actually a more robust tool for to, for building those reports um, and and looking at those uh, those things inside of there. Uh, but it's from a very analyst perspective. It's not from let's put together a nice pretty um, some charts and a dashboard report. It's more of let me dive into the data and get the answers I'm looking for. Um, and so if that's uh, a good direction for your organization, go. You've got the staffing uh, for that, or you're planning to hire for that. Uh, GA4 is is probably a really good option. Um, big push towards big query. Uh, if you want your data, you may have to pay for it. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you know we started with here's Google Analytics, a free way to measure your ads. Please pay us for ads. We're making money on ads. Uh, Google Analytics is such a big product now, um, and big query is also a big product uh, that this is I think uh, Google's time to kind of say, all right. Um, now it's now it's time that you will actually buy into this uh, and, start, and start paying for this data a little bit. Um, so fortunately, right now uh, we've already seen changes in this because uh, you'll see that's my next bullet. Uh, but for right now, there are some free BigQuery limits um, that seem to work well for most people, um, and it seems like most smaller orgs uh, are not hitting those limits yet and are able to get what they need to out of BigQuery. Are able to configured data studio to use BigQuery to pull all of the data out of GA4 instead of just the limited amount the normal connector gives you. Um, so this is hopeful. And, uh, you know, I think Google may uh, see the light uh, as this continues down. I've noticed a number of blog posts from Google lately saying this organization or this company used to spend thousands of dollars a month on BigQuery uh, queries and data storage, and we helped them get it down to $200 a month. Um, so I think they're already kind of ramping up this marketing messaging around, it doesn't have to be expensive <laughs> uh, as, as maybe some uh, bigger organizations are expecting it to be. Uh, and so I think they have a, a obviously vested interest in keeping as many people as possible on GA4. Uh, so hopefully those BigQuery limits will continue, but Changes are still happening weekly, and what you can do, capture, and report on today may not be available tomorrow. Um, a good example is custom dimensions, which last year Google was like, you've got 100 of them. Uh, you had 20 in universal analytics, now you've got 100. Go ahead and capture all kinds of custom stuff, uh, and that's already gone. Um, there's now a limit of 50 or 25, depending on what type of dimension uh, you're setting up. Um, and so like these things are already being kind of pulled back and scaled back. Um, and, you know, obviously, since changes are still happening weekly, the entire industry <laughs> uh, is learning, is on the learning curve right now. Um, there's not, uh, you're not going to have, um, you can't expect to have infinite access to just um, hire a consultant or hire uh, anybody uh, 
um, and have them had 10 years of experience with Google Analytics. Uh, tried and tested solutions is, is, is how I wrote it there, but um, we're all still learning and adapting. Uh, and it's it's all still kind of being tested and developed as as we go. Uh, and another thing, you know, to call out there, and uh, we'll we'll talk about this with the impacts on the sector thing. Uh, this slide here, uh, there's four big areas uh, where we see significant impacts uh, across the sector. Uh, but the one I keep kind of touching on is if you hire an intern, if you hire um, someone new to manage your email, you hire someone new to manage your website, anything like that, they've probably had Google Analytics experience. Um, they can probably go in there, start answering some questions, um, run some quick reports. Um, it, it's It's been ubiquitous for about a decade now, right? That's gone, uh, unfortunately, as of you know, uh, July of next year. Um, you can't count on that. Uh, you can't just say, well, let's uh, let's hire um, you know a, a younger person um, who's maybe managed social media stuff before, and they're going to just have this built in, baked in knowledge um, around uh, analytics and everything. Um, your current staff who may be well, uh, very familiar with universal analytics, uh, any new staff you hire uh, for the next couple of years are just not going to have uh, that baseline uh, experience with GA4, where you can just expect that, oh, well, it's a standard, everyone kind of uses it. Um, we, we shouldn't have to spend too much on training. Uh, I think the budget for training, rebuilding reports, especially in the first year, um, and, and exporting the data uh, is going to grow. Um, I think you're going to see need to really start investing in analytics here. If you were using, you know, a totally free uh, setup before, I, I don't think that's uh, that's going to fly at this point. Uh, and also, um, to go back to the top, metrics. Uh, there's new metrics that may or may not be in line with your strategy, uh, and you know, because of that a ubiquitous nature of of um, Google Analytics uh, and the way this has gone the past. Decade, I think there's a, 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 a there was the sense that well, this is the way it's done, so this is the way we should capture our metrics. Uh, and realistically, that's never been true, but it's especially not true right now with GA4. Um, if it's not in line with your strategy, uh, with the way that your organization um, talks about your content, talks about your goals, uh, if it's not collecting data that answers your organizations unique questions uh then it's it's not a right fit maybe it needs to be customized maybe you need a different platform but that strategy question uh and how data strategy works in your organization is going to be huge uh and there's going to be need to be conversations around that there's also going to be uh many new conversations just around oh i suddenly have uh access i think uh ga4 is democratizing access to kind of everything at your organization now. We're not restricting things by view. Uh, it's not easy to say, only look at this, only look at this part of the site, only look at this part of our portfolio. Uh, if you have GA4 access, you see it all. It's all in there, um, which is good. And new expertise will be built, but it's going to take time. And as we said, it's going to take uh, some budget for, for training and really getting people brought up to speed. Uh, and all of that collectively kind of coalesces into this uh, performance bullet here. Uh, it's going to be difficult to compare to past impact. And that's, you know, again, um, a big thing right now, please get GA4 turned on as soon as possible so that you can start looking at how are our numbers going to change? How are our reports um, to grantors, to funders, to the board, to our constituents, how to our teams? How is all of that going to change? And how are we going to talk about that um, internally? Uh, and if you don't have enough kind of overlapping data, it's going to be really hard to compare to past impact. You're going to be looking at totally different numbers in 2023 than you are in 2022 and 2021. And it's going to it's going to be really hard to say, here's how we've been doing on a five or 10 year scale, right? Hopefully, uh, the shift gets organizations to start asking what analytics means to them and how data can be better used to drive decisions. So key things to do, and I, I think there's already a number of questions in chat, uh, as I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, number one, create a new GA4 property if you don't already have that. If you do, or if you are using universal analytics, uh, you can go in 
and um, under the admin section, under property, there's a GA4 setup assistant that'll walk you through the whole thing. Um, it'll ask you if you want to create a new GA4 property, and you do. Just remember that your data is starting from scratch from when you click that getting started button, or actually, once you click getting started, uh, if you're using, I think, GTAG, the, uh, the JavaScript version, um, it should just be able to click that automatically, start collecting. If you're using Tag Manager, you'll have to uh, go in and create a new tag. Um, so that uh, that will be a little bit more extra work there. Um, enhanced measurement initially, for whatever reason, was not on by default because uh, GA4 was like, hey, that's totally extra data to want to you know see your page views, uh, which is Obviously, uh, uh, coming from Universal Analytics, pretty bizarre. Uh, uh, GA4 has uh, taken a lot of the customizations that used to happen that people were doing on their own and now just made it as simple as selecting a switch. Of, we'll start looking at how many people view videos. Uh, we'll start looking at downloads, we'll start looking at scroll depth, um, and put them all under this uh, category of enhanced measurement. I believe it is now on by default, uh, but Great to take a quick look and just make sure that it's uh, it is turned on and it's configured uh, the way you like. That goes the same for e-commerce and ads. Uh, if you're already using those, you want to spend a little, few extra minutes to get uh, everything there set up and linked in. Uh, this is uh, as well as soon as possible. Document your current analytics usage uh, and your current customizations. Uh, really take a look at. What is your organization doing um, right now? How are people using it on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis? Um, what's happening and what might you possibly lose by moving to a new platform? And when I say lose, I mean, what might you have to recreate when you move to a new platform? Uh, also, get a, get a rough sense of how well your current setup aligns with your organizational strategy. Um, is it collecting data in a way that makes sense to your organization? Is it collecting data in a way that uh, it, it's just Google's way of by default and, and you have to kind of bend and flex the uh, organizational strategy to look at metrics that aren't quite what you wanted? Um, just get a sense of, of what's the temperature there? Is it is it totally off the rails? Is it like, no, this is this pretty much aligns. Uh, and you know, you can save, I'll save yourself a lot of time and effort um, by using our self-service toolkit. Uh, I don't know if um, if that link has been shared, but now is the great time to share that link. <laughs> Excuse me, and I'm going to drink some water here and get my voice back. Um, <coughs> right, so um, we uh, at Parts and TKO have set up a self-service toolkit uh, you can jump in, you can get all kinds of uh, information. Uh, it'll walk you through a number of these questions that I'm talking about, um, uh, things that I'm saying to document, things that I'm saying to you know, get a rough sense on. It'll ask you direct questions, uh, help you get answers to the, to help you find the answers to those within your organization, uh, and then make recommendations of saying, you know what, GA4 is a really good fit for you, or actually you may want to consider these other platforms. Uh, which it gets us into the coming months, key things to do uh, moving forward. Uh, number one, um, start using both Universal Analytics and GA4 when you're exploring the uh, your regular site performance, uh, doing your, your regular routine uh, content reports and things like that. Uh, this way you can spot discrepancies early on and start addressing them uh, to the, uh, the audience for those reports. Um, and you can start kind of building a story of how we're moving from universal analytics to GA4, how we're getting more accurate uh, and more, um, more uh, custom or custom fit data to an organization. Also dive in a bit more deeply to data strategy within your organization. Uh, look for problems and opportunities and unexplored questions. Uh, and a question that I always love to ask folks when we're starting these conversations out are, what kind of questions do you and your teams wish you could answer? And it's amazing if you sit someone down um, just for a second and just say, what kind of data do you look at, you know, in, in your in your normal week, normal month for you? And then you ask, what kind of questions do you wish you could answer? Uh, and they'll probably have two or three things right off the top of their head that they'll say, like, I wish we could know 
at, at a high level, you know, uh, what types of pages people are viewing? Um, can we set, can we find audience segments by content types, right? And these are things you can set up. Um, but when you ask them the kinds of questions they wish they could find answers to, uh, that's going to explain a lot about data strategy for you. I also recommend testing out current external reports and dashboard with GA4 data. We get a little screenshot here. This is from uh, Data Studio. Uh, I wouldn't recommend taking uh, a report and just switching it right away to GA4. I would make a copy because it's probably going to break uh, and you probably want to play around with that. Uh, and you may, um, again, I said less than half of the dimensions are available. So depending on what you're doing in Data Studio, um, or in other tools like that, you may wind up needing to go with BigQuery and start playing with that as well. Um, again, do this early so that you're not right up against the deadline. Start getting insights into, um, into the tools themselves, the platforms themselves, uh, how our report's going to change. What, what do we need to do differently? Uh, and yeah, last but not least, definitely consider other analytics platforms that might better fit your needs. Uh, and again, our self-service tool is a great way to do that. Uh, we can make all kinds of uh, recommendations there. You can start kind of getting the data uh, uh, about your organization, uh, looking at that um, and, and starting to get a better sense of, of where you should be heading. Uh, and that's, yeah, we can help. <laughs> there you go. Um, so when we talk about data strategy, and actually let me, let me pause here and just see if there's, um, there's any uh, big standout stand up questions about uh, about anything that we didn't get to Let's see link to the toolkit has been shared so yeah please click that um and another thing i wanted to mention on that toolkit is that um there is if you go to that site and um read through there's a link where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, I think eventually that will be uh, a, a paid uh, opportunity for people to, um, uh, we'll, we'll have a number of, of products that, that can help. One being um, we can come in and kind of do all this documentation for you and come up with a plan of how to migrate. Um, one is that we can you know, also do technical services. We can do a lot of the setup um, and streamlining that, get, get you moving quickly, do some of the customizations as well. Uh, and then last but not least are those one-on-one -on -one calls uh, of just let's chat for 30 minutes. Um, let, let's hear uh, what your concerns are, um, where, where you're stuck, what you're thinking about. Um, and it looks like, yeah, that, that link is just going out there. Um, so as you look at those migration services, uh, right now those one-on-one -on -one calls are, are free. Um, so uh, feel free to book one uh, if you want to chat uh, with, uh, I believe, uh, I believe it's Stefan, who's uh, our head of data here um, at Parson TKO. Um, you can get 30 minutes with him and uh, and chat about your questions and your concerns and uh, you know anything you had uh, you're planning to do with these things. So uh, take advantage of that. Uh, and we'll at the end of the uh, at the end of this, I'll, I'll share um, a couple other um, places to go, resources to look for. We have a lot of free uh, help that we we provide uh, via our website. Um, let's see, and I'm just, uh, I'm just looking here. Okay. Yeah. I think we've got, um, I think our questions, questions have been answered. So let me, um, just kind of dive through here a little bit, uh, and talk a little bit higher level about data strategy and what we mean when we, when we say that, uh, as you look across your organization, um, your platforms, uh, your portfolio, your all of your digital properties, uh, all of your architecture, even your internal systems and everything. Um, we should always be paying attention to the mission and goals and strategies of your organization. Uh, we should be documenting um, how data is used, how fresh and accurate data is, uh, and who owns the data. Um, we want to be looking for strategic opportunities. Uh, who's in a position to change course based on data insights. Who needs to see this data? When do they need to see it? Um, and also uh, data dictionaries. You know, if I'm new to the org or I'm changing departments or uh, I just 
doing something I've never done before. Where do I go to learn about the data? Uh, obviously, that fits in with uh, documentation, but it also, uh, you know, speaks to that the data is is actively uh, maintained um, and, and and watched over. Let's see. Um, on here, we have yeah, we have about ten more minutes. So, uh, just quickly. Um, to talk a little bit about Parsons TKO and how we how we look at uh, this uh, data strategy. Um, when we do data strategy work, we find that most folks get stuck in numbers two and three, right? They're looking at tracking and technology. They're looking at just the technical pieces, setting it up, making sure it, it, it's running. They're looking at reporting and analysis. I want to see a nice chart. I want to see it every 30 days. Uh, email, email me that. Put it in your um, you know, your monthly report, uh, slide deck, etc. But uh, what gets missed are numbers one and four, <laughs> the front and back of this, right? Um, that strategy definition, as I was just talking about, um, if we don't take time to plan what gets tracked and what gets reported, um, then that, that really gets hindered. Um, we might not be collecting the right data. We might not be collecting complete data. Uh, we might be reporting on the wrong data or misrepresenting the data. Uh, I remember my point about bounce rate earlier. Uh, how many people uh, were um, reporting on bounce rate and thinking, great, this, this tells me how many people aren't really actively engaged with the site uh, and didn't know that actually it, it's, it's mostly just reporting on people who came to, the, to view one page and then left. If um, like many, sites, if that was your primary way of um, measuring engagement, uh, and the primary way people interact with your content is just coming and looking at one page, then wow, you have a, a definition problem. Uh, you need to capture events on the page and start doing some of the things that GA4 is doing um, to know how people are actually interacting on that single page visit, because Universal Analytics isn't set up with that by default. And then on the flip side, Adoption and optimization, another thing we really need to be paying attention to here. Um, and what I've kind of been cautioning you against. Um, it's easy. There's a button to click. You know, there's the setup wizard in GA4 or in Universal Analytics. Yeah, let me just set up this new GA4 property. Great. It's there. It's collecting data. No problem. Um, if you don't spend time and invest the time and the resources uh, into adoption and optimization, um, then you're just collecting data um, and you don't know what it does. And, uh, and and maybe even worse, uh, you might be collecting the wrong data. And people might come through a year from now and look at it and say, oh, I guess this is accurate because we've been collecting it. Um, and it was never defined, uh, it was never you know, understood or tracked fully. Um, and now you've just got these, uh, uh, these holes in your, in your reporting scheme because it was never fully adopted. It was never fully documented. It was never fully optimized, i.e. Let's look at the report, collect better data because that didn't quite answer our questions. Let's keep going. Let's keep a um, a full. Uh, let's keep the data fresh and accurate. Um, and with all that in mind, uh, then what we kind of want to say here is that um, some thoughts on resource allocation for GA four if you decide to go that route. Um, really thinking that at a minimum you're going to need one person on your staff with 10 hours a week to spare this bare minimum um not just to get the setup but to keep it maintained to keep it um to keep the data fresh uh to make sure it's getting used properly uh throughout the organization um from a tech spec tech stack maintenance perspective um if you want more than just basic ga4 which as i've been noting here for nearly an hour now you probably will um you were going to want someone reviewing the data quality, making updates, road mapping new customizations. And, uh, you know, again, bare minimum 10 hours a month it can be the same person, but it's probably going to be an extra 10 hours. Uh, and then for reporting, uh, you know, just remember that um, GDS dashboards, if you're using those, Google Data Studio will need to be completely rebuilt and probably using BigQuery, which means you'll also need to be setting up BigQuery, an additional product, um, which has its own workflow. Uh, and can wind up costing money if you don't configure it properly. Um, if your reporting moves to GA4, you need to spend uh, a lot of your budget uh, and training time 
making sure your staff knows how to go in and get the answers they're looking for because it's not readily available the way it was with Universal Analytics. Uh, and again, you know, they won't have had past experiences to rely on um, because it's it's not an industry standard. It's it's too new. Um, yeah, and and just some notes that other you know other tools that you may be hoping will, will work are also still in flux. I think I was just looking at Tableau, um, where they still have not fully turned on the GA4 connector, um, and so. It, you know, if Tableau is what you're using, I, I don't think you can just pull the data in without going into BigQuery. Um, so as I said, it's it's a near requirement if you're doing anything besides GA4 uh, that you also have to be using BigQuery. And so that's obviously going to add more time, more budget, um, maybe more staff um, to, to manage that workflow. Uh, and this is a slide I'll get to in a minute of just you know some of the things that we can offer, but let me uh, let me flip back to the questions here. Um, let's see when the ability to create different views for different teams does appear with Universal Analytics. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you recommend setting up different properties or reports as a substitute in GA four? Um, that is that is hard to say. Uh, I don't know what the limit on properties is going to be, uh, and obviously then. If you get into multiple properties, uh, you get um, it gets a little bit dangerous because you're not sure if both properties are one to one. Did they start collecting data at the exact same instant? Um, did they uh, uh, did they have all the same customizations on them? All the same things like that. It, it it's a it can be a management uh, and documentation nightmare. Um, or you know if we're talking about two or three things um, and we just want to restrict it to certain sites and people know very clearly. Uh, how good the data is, it, it might not be a, it might not be a bad idea. Um, but uh, but you know certainly what might be better is just um, taking the time to learn the tools uh, within GA4 uh, to get to get those answers. Um, are any are there any WordPress analytics plugins you recommend? Um, there's a main one I will uh, see if um. Our engineer is on the call here. Uh, I think he knows the uh, what that recommendation is, uh, what we have used in the past, and uh, whether it's good for um, good for GA four uh, as well. Um, I think uh, I think what we've used is actually just a uh, we, we tend to prefer GTM, which is Google Tag Manager. Um, if you're already using that, you know it's it's pretty easy to just add a tag for GA4, um, and I believe um, the uh, some of the plugins there uh, will work. All right, um, I may need to add that in here. Um, second. So what I'm thinking here, are there any other questions? I can circle back around to that one. Uh, but um, yeah, the, the, uh, I, I think we generally prefer uh, GTM. It's a little bit um, of a nicer managed experience, but um, uh, I, WordPress especially should have a, a basic GA4 uh, plugin to think about. Uh, let's see the other one. Does it make sense to set up at Set up a consultation if my organization is just beginning to think about our data strategy. Absolutely, that is a great time to set up a consultation. Uh, we would love to talk with you um, at, at at this time uh, because you know um, there's a little bit of that uh, you know don't move my cheese aspect uh, when we come in and start talking about data strategy uh, to organizations who put a lot of thought into it um, and are you know somewhat somewhat hesitant. Sometimes one department owns it or you know one individual owns it. Um, and there's uh, some hesitation to kind of open up and have a, an org-wide conversation about it. But certainly, if you're just getting started, uh, we absolutely want to be uh, involved there. Um, uh, and as you can see here, some of the those major changes we uh, we can help you navigate are data capture, data retention, uh, data reporting. Um, not just what questions do you need to be asking of your data, but also what's the best tools to use. Uh, what's the you know how can you uh, focus on adoption, how can you tie it into meetings you're already having, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
let's see. Um, so yeah, is there are there any other questions there? All right. Well, uh, I guess with that, I'll just flip to this slide real quick here. Um, please take our free content at parsonsuko.com. Uh, we have more events like these. Uh, we have podcasts uh, talking with uh, some luminaries in the in the uh, industry and in the sector. Um, uh, we have many training videos uh, and panels, discussions, past webinars, things like that. Uh, we also have a lot of articles uh, and obviously the, um, uh, maybe we should share in the chat again, um, just in case anybody missed it, uh, that that uh, decision-making tool um, that links to a blog post on, you know, deciding if GA4 is right for you. Uh, if you don't uh, feel like setting up a call, if you don't feel like going through the, the whole uh, toolkit and answering those questions, there's a, a little blog post that you can just read through. I say little, it's actually quite an in-depth blog post uh, that you can read through. But um, yeah, so a number of options uh, spe specifically around GA4 um, where you can learn about the services we offer. You can use that self-service toolkit. It's totally free, um, no obligation or anything like that. Uh, you can set up a call with us um, and and we'll uh, help talk you through it, coach you through it, uh, whatever you like. Uh, we're here to help. <laughs>